OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Uh, my name is Barry Bakin. Uh, I am an instructional technology teacher advisor uh, for the Division of Adult and Career Education of the Los Angeles Unified School District. I'm very uh, happy and fortunate to, to have that particular position that have had it for a few years now. Uh, it's an out of classroom uh, position. Uh, all of our adult, our major adult schools uh, have this position now. And our role is to assist teachers in implementing uh, technology from the instructional standpoint. Fortunately, we also have other people who help teachers with the technical end of things, and they help me as well. So, um, as I said, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to, to have this position. We have other people who, who help us with um, the technical end of things, and our focus is uh, helping the teachers, uh, you know, in, in the division uh, use technology instructionally. And uh, my other major role uh, is for OTAN. Uh, I'm an, a subject matter expert, meaning uh, not only do I do these uh, webinars, uh, but hopefully sometime soon uh, we'll be cleared to do face to face presentations uh, in schools again. But of course, uh, you know, only when that's you know verified as as being safe. But, but I hope that starts to to happen again sometime. Uh, soon. So uh, let's review uh, the objective for today. Uh, participants will be able to demonstrate to their ESL, AB, and academic students several separate projects using Microsoft PowerPoint and Excel uh, with the idea that uh, by so doing, they'll be practicing uh, vocabulary, grammar, or you know, making sure that you know as the teacher that they have some mastery of content. Uh, the, everything that I'm gonna demonstrate um, is with the office suite, but uh, th they all are virtually, they're all also you know, able to be done using uh, the Google apps. So it may just uh, require some minor adaptation uh, or clicking on something a little bit different, but basically the project ideas uh, are all gonna be transferable. Um, we talked in the first session uh, briefly about uh, adapting uh, projects to online instruction. And so hopefully, um, you know, we'll just cover that really, really briefly here. But uh, what, what this was, uh, this image is showing you is that some, something that I used to do on a single piece of paper as a Word document in a face-to-face -face classroom. You know, now that we're using uh, learning management systems or other ways to communicate, uh, you know, with our teachers, uh, sorry, with our students, uh, you know, you can, what we want to do is try to explore, you know, is a piece of paper project, uh, you know, in Word, uh, the best way to make use of the current tools that we have. So in the, the particular project that I uh, talked about uh, last week, was something that I called about me. And basically students you know, would write a paragraph or two paragraphs, depending on their level, uh, about themselves. And that would go into a Word document. So in terms of uh, adapting that, you know, in my LMS, the one that we use uh, at LA Unified Schoology, you know, there's a little bio page. And so instead of making this project or doing this project as a Word document, it's very easily adaptable to the learning management system because you could just have students, uh, you know, fill out that bio page and add in their photo, and uh, it really serves the same purpose. But again, it's a, you know making use of the tools that we have. Same thing goes for you know presenting the instructions and and samples. In the face-to-face -face setting, you could just, you know, hold it up in front of the, you know, hold up your piece of paper, hold up your document in front of the students. 
and stand in front of the students and chat with them about you know what to do so you know every instructor has to uh you know make some decisions about what are the best ways uh to demonstrate projects uh for your students so uh, i do uh, want to review this one uh project from uh last week uh, for a couple of reasons one i think it's just a great great project it's a lot of fun students really get a kick out of it it's very very flexible you know no matter what level or, or course you're teaching you know you can adapt what you tell students to include in their uh presentation uh, and again it can be done in a multiple way uh multiple ways uh on a single uh slide or in this case uh multiple slides so the the conversation uh you know appears sequentially uh and also um it gives an opportunity for students to uh practice using uh their voice uh and by recording the selection so real quickly uh let me just run through the four slides of this particular one And I'm not sure if you can hear the voicing on that, but that was a student voice. I love you and the baby so much there. I wanted it in my baby. Okay, so uh, just let's just take a quick uh, moment here and ask uh, if if there are any. Uh, any participants today who uh, were in the webinar uh, last week, uh, maybe in the chat, if you could uh, let us know uh, if you tried it out and and how it went. Uh, and then, uh, Anthony, if you could keep an eye on that and then share that with us, uh, if there are any responses, if anybody who was here last week actually tried this project out uh, with their students. I'm going to continue uh, while Anthony uh, takes care of the chat. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to go. The other thing is that in the uh, during the session last week, the, the, the question was asked, well, how do you how do you uh, record your voice? So I will talk about that uh, in our next project and, and, and you can uh, practice uh, as well. Uh, if you weren't here last week and this project uh, interests you and uh, you're not sure or you don't know, uh, how to make the little speech balloons. Uh, if there's time at the end of today's uh, presentation, uh, I'll be happy to review the actual steps for making those uh, little speech balloons. So uh, the first project uh, that I will talk about a little bit more in depth today uh, is I used to just call this PowerPoint grammar. Uh, but in truth, you can do all sorts of uh, things with it, uh, you know, PowerPoint vocabulary, uh, you know, PowerPoint storytelling. And uh, again, uh, the beauty of this project is it's so easily adaptable uh, to all levels and to, you know, all topics. Uh, you give the students a chance to reinforce uh, selected vocabulary, selected grammar, or particular content. And basically what it is is a, a, a multiple slide uh, presentation where the students uh, you know, demonstrate that they understand or can use a, the particular grammar point or include the vocabulary uh, appropriately. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, share a particular example uh, of this. Let's see if we can get this. So let me expand that. Okay, so uh, this is a Vicente uh, project from a few years ago, but uh, all about modals. You can see them, but what I want to do is I want to play this uh, as well so that um, you can get the, the, the full impact of having student voices. When I was young, I could swim very fast. All boys must be citizens of the United States. 
May I use your laptop? The weather might change very soon. So in any case, I think that you can see that, um, you know, given the students the opportunity to uh, insert their voices uh, into a project, uh, you know, just adds a lot of interest uh, to the project. But then also you can really work with uh, that particular student on pronunciation and then they can uh, re you know go back and try to improve it and if they save their projects uh, as versions you know so they could and with dates uh, even uh, then it's very easy for them to see their improvement uh, and that's a nice added benefit uh, you can see in that one this student um, you know had a, obviously has a little bit more experience uh, using uh, the computer and using PowerPoint, you know, they had some transitions, you know, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of text. But again, uh, even uh, lower level students uh, can can really make uh, use of this. So what I'd like to do now is uh, review or talk a little bit about uh, recording uh, narration uh, in PowerPoint. So uh, the first thing, and uh, this actually happened with me as I was preparing uh, for this particular uh, webinar, you have to check uh, the microphone level uh, and make sure that uh, the, the computer, the laptop is set up uh, to, to record voice. Um, the, the particular laptop I'm using now is actually a, a new laptop for me from the uh, received from the school. Uh, and I actually hadn't really used it for uh you know recording in a powerpoint and i it took me uh, several tries uh wondering why don't i have any sound when i when i'm doing this narration to realize that the micro the level of the recording on uh, the microphone uh, was like set to zero so um that's just one thing that i personally had to remember to check the microphone level uh and so uh we're going to go over this with an actual uh, PowerPoint, but basically, uh, there's only a couple of steps. Select uh, slideshow, record slideshow, uh, and then you just have a choice. Select start recording from the beginning or start recording from the current slide. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, do that. I'll show you uh, how that's done. I'm trying to grab my doesn't seem to want to grab. Let's see. I'm trying to move move my desired PowerPoint over to the other screen. So I may have to stop the share and see if I can do that. There we go. Let me resume the share. Okay, so uh, right here, for example, uh, we're looking at a, a very basic four slide uh, presentation. Uh, you know, the idea of something like this would be to uh, show uh, that the student is aware of some of the simple, you know, grammar transformations, you know, in this case from past tense. Okay. Uh, to present continuous to uh, maybe a negative declaration. Okay, so that was the idea. I think I may have a, a duplicate there. That's quite okay. Oh, let's get rid of one of them. That's thought I gave me an extra one instead of students used iPads, students used iPads to study in class. Uh, let's see if we can delete that slide. There we go. Yeah, we'll delete that. I may have hit the wrong menu item. So uh, students used iPads, students are using iPads, and students, students don't use desktop computers. So very, very simple. If you do start from the beginning, okay, uh, under slideshow, okay, there's a 
a button, record the slideshow. And you do have two options, start recording from the beginning, start recording from current slide. And typically, you know, uh, you may want to encourage them to try this just right from the beginning, see if they can do the whole thing. Uh, but what you do when you click that is you do want to make sure that both are selected. Uh, slide and animation timings and then narrations ink and laser pointer uh, that's the narration one that's where it records your sound okay and all you're going to do is click on start recording and you see up in the upper left hand corner uh, the little recording menu uh, so the students start speaking students used ipads to study in class okay so then uh, you go to the next one and it's still recording. Students are using iPads to study in class. Students don't use desktop computers to study in class. And then what happens is uh, when you uh, get to the last slide, the recording stops. So now you can go back and play it and hopefully we'll get the sound on this. So we want to, and notice also, you can see here on the left side, uh, you, you have the little indication that something, uh, you know, a new a transition has happened. So let's play it from the beginning and, uh, you know, through the magic of Zoom and webinars, hopefully everything will work okay. And you see up in the upper left-hand corner, uh, the little recording menu. Uh, so the students start speaking students used ipads to study in class okay so then uh, you go to the next one and it's still recording students are using ipads to study in class students don't use desktop computers to study in class Okay, so obviously I spoke, you know, I, I had some extra, uh, some extra words in there, so I, I may want to fix that. Okay, so that's where the other menu item comes in, uh, where you can just, you know, if your students are really unhappy with everything, they can just do it uh, all, you know, completely over and start recording from the beginning. And what happens is it just starts all over again. Uh, you can, however, also choose start recording from a current slide. Now, um, I used to get really confused about this. So let's say, for example, it's the slide number two that you have to fix. So you first, obviously, you want to highlight it. And then I would do the start recording from the current slide, and I I would get frustrated because it would actually would record everything like it, I, it would finish slide number two and then expect me to start on slide number three. Because what it does is it records from the current slide to the end of the slideshow, which could mean that slide number three or slide number four or five were fine, but you ended up erasing them. So after a little bit of a, you know, frustration with that particular uh, issue it occurred to me that probably the best thing to do would just be to uh, duplicate that slide. And, and the reason I do that is just so I uh, don't, um, you know, I still have the original if I needed to, if I, you know, if I messed up. So I would just uh, duplicate that one slide and then move that slide to the end. Let's see. So now when I record from the end, it's the last slide. So it only records that last slide. So I go back to slideshow, record slideshow, start recording from the current slide. So now it's only going to record, I'm only going to be asked to uh, record my voice for the last slide. And I, again, I keep both checked students are using ipads to study in class so that's it that's the last slide now what i can do is i can move that last slide up okay 
when I check it, so let me start from the beginning. And you see up in the upper left hand corner, uh, the little recording menu. Uh, so the students start speaking. Students used iPads to study in class. Okay, so then students are using iPads to study in class. Uh, you go to the next one and it's still recording. Okay, so we know now that uh, slide number two is okay. I can delete slide number three. Uh, and now slide number two is good. So the other way to do that is you could also just move the slides. So remember slide number one had all of that extra information. So I'm gonna move it down to the bottom, record slideshow, start recording from current slide, accept both uh, check marks and start recording. Students used iPads to study in class. So there we go. Now I can move it back up to the top and let's see how our presentation looks or sounds from the beginning. Students used iPads to study in class. Students are using iPads to study in class. Students don't use desktop computers to study in class. Okay, so uh, let me stop there and just ask, uh, have you, are you trying this on your own? Uh, if this is a new technique, I suggest that you do. Uh, and again, you can, uh, you know, the, the most, uh, I think the most useful tip for your students is uh, if they're gonna do this, move that slide that you want to fix uh, down to the, the last row or you know make a duplicate duplicate of the original move that down to the last row and then you know replace it uh, but that will be a, a very very helpful to students when they're trying to fix particular things also during the correction phase you know if you've said oh you know what uh, I think you need to work on your present your pronunciation uh, under uh, slide number four that they only have to fix slide number four. They don't have to fix all the other uh, slides. So uh, if, you, if you want to go ahead, take a minute uh, and uh, enter into the uh, chat any comment that you may have about whether or not I should repeat the steps uh, one more time or uh, whether or not we, uh, you know, if you've tried it uh, yourself for the first time and found that it works, uh, and you're having any issues with it, uh, or if we can uh, move on. Okay, well, um, not seeing any comments or uh, Anthony not stopping me, let's uh, move ahead. Gary, you did get a, a, a oh. comment, very clear explanation, so. Oh, good, well, but that also means I can move ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Um, and I will say, it, it took me a long time to figure out the little trick of uh, moving the slide down to the uh, the bottom of the, the row of slides or the list of slides. So um, that will really save you a lot of time. Okay, let me uh, get rid of this one here. Uh, do I want to save that? No, let's say no. Okay, so um, a next very, very basic uh, project uh, that works out uh, really, really well in uh, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, but of course, is it, you know, if you don't, if you feel like your students aren't, uh, you know, ready for PowerPoint, it can also be done as a single document or even a single uh, slide. Uh, but this was just basically an interview project uh, for you know lower level uh, students to you know get in the habit or you know get practice with asking questions, and so uh, I just called it the interview project. And uh, basically, you know, you're just instructing your your students uh, to interview somebody else, and then you know 
take some pictures while they're doing that uh, so that they have uh, you know something to uh, populate the, the slides with and um, you know have a little bit of text and so I'm not going to go into uh, you know great detail about how to do this because you know if your students can do the other PowerPoint you know by the time uh, you know, if you've introduced uh, uh, in a previous project, you know, the basic ideas of using PowerPoint, inserting text or inserting an image, then, um, you know, technically this is uh, no different than that. It's just an idea of uh, how you could use uh, PowerPoint uh, to, you know, give your students an opportunity for, you know, writing a little bit uh, about a topic that uh, is of interest. and. You know that topic is you know the people in their class or people in their family uh you know where they somebody that they can uh ask questions about let me just uh, show you how that works or let's see if i can grab the actual uh presentation here and so again you can see it a little bit more uh clearly And again, that is the um, interview project. Oh, I think I didn't. Okay, so uh, next up uh, was something I called the, the daily activities project. Uh, and uh, this is, you know, is like was the first introduction uh, for my students to uh, using uh, Excel. And, um, you know, a lot of times, even, you know, my colleagues, teachers that I work with uh, have, uh, very little awareness of um, how to use Excel. Uh, but I always reassure both the students and the colleagues that, you know, to do this project, um, you're not using, uh, you know, any of the really complex features of Excel. Uh, but let me go ahead and show, uh, show an actual student, another student example. So this is a was a intermediate low uh, class. A, a title slide, uh, the actual chart, and then uh, a paragraph uh, to go with it. So this is what that actually looks like uh, in Excel. And uh, for this one, I am going to, I'll run through it uh, so that you can see what it is that you actually have to do. Okay, so um, you have, you can decide, you know, with your particular students, how, how much of this uh, you want to, uh, you know, how complicated. Uh, you want to make it how much of the 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 ways that you can change these things uh, can uh, you know how many different ways there are to change this to make it a little bit more complex or not so I'm just going to delete that so we can go ahead and, and show you uh, how to how to do that let's see I want to highlight it and just delete it okay so basically the that entire chart is created by only two columns okay so you need one column column a uh, is going to be the different 
activities. So you could work, you know, depending again on your students, you know, either they can come up with these categories or you can talk about it first and you can give them some, a list of suggested categories. Uh, so the first is just a, a list of different categories. Okay, and so you could think of other things uh, as well. I, I guess now we could say Zoom meetings, you know, how, how and then, you know, the time, uh, you know, how many hours a day or how many minutes a day. So, you know, you can certainly uh, add those. It seems like I'm doing a lot right now a day. Okay. And that's it. Two columns. First column are the, uh, the topics. Second column is just the numbers. And it's just a very simple, uh, you know, process. You click on the first uh, the first item, drag down and over to highlight everything. Okay. And then basically, uh, all you want to do is insert a table or create a, create a table out of that. So you're in some type of table and then a chart. So on the insert menu, uh, you see uh, a, a lot of pre-formatted or little icons relate all different types of charts. So in this particular case, just select the pie chart, insert a pie chart. And then they give you some samples, okay? For this particular project, you know, that 3D pie is really nice. And, you know, you can, your students can, you know, as they roll, as you roll the mouse over it, uh, you know, you can see the options, but basically for this, it's either gonna be the straight pie chart in two dimensions or the 3D. So let's pick the 3D one because visually it's very interesting. And it, it populates it. Uh, and then you can enlarge it also. And then notice across the top now, you have a lot of variations. Okay, so uh, what are the differences? Well, you know, this is visual and then they have the, uh, you know, the titles down at the bottom, okay. And, but you don't really see anything. So, you know, you, maybe you want to change it, you know, so you can see this one, you can, re, the, the labels move up to the pot, to the chart itself. And then, so you can let your students, uh, you know, let them pick which one they think is the most interesting or the most dramatic uh, to get their information. Okay. Now, once they've selected that, you know, a lot of these items are, you know, movable. So if this is getting a little bit too crowded, you can show them, you know, you just click on it, the item you want, and you can move it. So there's quite a few things that you can do. And you can let the students, um, you know, experiment with that. Uh, but the idea is, you know, once they're done, they have, this becomes an image. All they have to do to get it into the PowerPoint is click on it and then let me do it again. I move my mouse, right click on it, and you get the uh, the copy. And so you can just copy that. And it's very easy then for students to, because they've already worked with PowerPoint in a previous project, uh, to go into their PowerPoint and just drop that image uh, into the slide. This uh, will come in handy uh, in a future project because we'll be making the same type of idea, but instead of making a pie chart, uh, making a, a bar graph, okay? But it, it's all the same. And again, that's another, uh, you know, key to making this work with your students. Start out with simpler projects and scaffold the skills up so that, you know, in the, they make use of skills they learned in the previous project uh, in, a, in a future project. Any questions about this particular um, task? Yeah, and, and the other nice thing about this is like, um, it's sort of live. So let's say, what else am I doing now? Uh, that sort of daily activities um, that I, maybe I didn't do uh, pre, uh, you know, pre working from home. Uh, I can't even think of one. Okay, well, house, oh, good, uh, house cleaning. Uh, 
and we'll make that a uh, 1.5. Okay, so just do it. It's so easy to, to fix. So now it's got the house cleaning. And we want to, again, go to insert, pick the pie chart. And, you know, so and once you show students this, it, you know, the, they can uh, easily, you know, make those changes uh, themselves. Okay, so that's the uh, daily activities pie chart. And again, you know, when they go to the Let me uh, uh, get back to the the PowerPoint. So, you know, again, they also have the option, as we just saw before, of recording uh, their voice for this. So, uh, the next uh, major project uh, that, that I want to talk about is something that I call the the research project. Uh, this was uh, much more uh, substantial than any of the other projects uh, and for uh, quite a few uh, reasons. Um, and so it was always like, you know, a culminating project of the semester. Uh, and basically uh, what it involved was that uh, students had to do research about an actual uh, hypothesis or, you know, some topic that they uh, felt was uh, interesting or important. Uh, because I was an ESL teacher, um, I, I wanted to make sure that their projects actually involved speaking. And so the idea was they would have to talk with other people uh, in the class or in the community to get uh, to gather their data. And then uh, the culmination would be to share that data uh, the results of their research uh, with an audience. Uh, let me um, show you uh, what that would be in practice. So I have a few uh, samples. So favorite country that most of the students would like to visit. And so so what they did was they went around to other students in the class and asked them, you know, what's your favorite country? Uh, uh, now notice this is uh, two, uh, two actual classes together. Mr. Buchko and myself uh, worked on these as a, uh, as a group project. And uh, part of the reason for that is uh, when I used to do this in my own class where they would uh, get do the research, create their PowerPoint presentation, and then present to the class of their buddies. Um, I noticed I, I was an intermediate uh, level class, and I noticed that um, my students could um, do the presentation and ask if the audience had any questions. But my students were not able to formulate questions very well about what they just heard. Uh, but let me show you why that's important. So, so this was, for example, the results of that particular question, uh, asking students, uh, you know, what country uh, they would most uh, like to visit. So there's there those are the results, and then, you know, the next part of their presentation was, do you have any questions? See. And at that point, the audience, the people listening to the presentation were supposed to, you know, ask some questions about what they just heard. Uh, so in any case, I, I found that my students at my level had difficulty um, asking questions about what they heard. So after struggling with that for a while, it finally occurred to me that, you know, maybe I should ask a higher level class to be the audience. Uh, and so that's what I uh, that's what I used to do, is I would invite level five and level six classes uh, into our classroom, 
to be the audience for my level three students who were giving the presentations because by level five and level six they were much more able to listen to the presentation and then formulate a question and uh, then of course that as uh, if you thought my students or your students will be nervous presenting to the people in their own class you know look how nervous they get when they're presenting to people from another class so that adds an extra uh, component of the whole presentation uh, process anyway the, 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 then there was a thank you slide at the end so basically you were typically looking at uh, four slides and I just want to run through if you don't mind a few more samples just so you can see the variety. Uh, what are the favorite cakes of the students who were in uh, Mr. Buckin's class on Friday, March 30th, uh, 2007 in this particular case? And uh, what I love about this one uh, is the insertion of the photos uh, of the actual uh, different cake styles uh, into, the, into the chart. And uh, I'll go over how that's done. That may be something that uh, you haven't seen before. And again, you know, different students, you know, could, uh, you know, make their PowerPoint, uh, you know, a little bit more interesting, depending on their own skills. Just to give you, a, a, again, some, the way things, um, you know, the way students, you know, make these projects their own. So uh, in this particular student, group of students, you know, much more complex than the other students because they actually uh, had three locations where they did this research. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, uh, these were restaurants uh, where that student uh, either their, their family owned or where she worked, uh, but actually do the research in different locations. So I thought that was, you know, again, worth sharing and then a, a combination. And I have one more. And again, uh, just to, to show you how students really uh, take this project and elaborate on it. And again, and this is the type of thing where I don't, you know, as an English teacher, or as an ESL teacher, you know, I didn't go into all of these things about, you know, doing transitions and, uh, you know, letting things appear, you know, by clicking. These, these are all skills that they brought to this particular uh, project because, you know, as an ESL teacher, you know, my goal isn't to teach them PowerPoint. My goal is to teach English, but students always had a way of uh, adding to their own skills to the projects. So uh, let me show you uh, one, before I go into the um, how to do this. Uh, so this is an actual photo of students in my rather cramped uh, classroom uh, back then uh, doing the actual uh, presentation. And, um, you know, this was a great opportunity for, uh, for me as the teacher to uh, introduce uh, presentation skills, which could come in handy when you know, in future employment or in future uh, settings. Uh, in this particular case, the, the uh, student uh, sitting in front of the laptop is part of the team. And so uh, that student is controlling the presentation, causing the slides to advance. And of course they worked on it. And then the uh, woman standing next to him uh, was doing the presentation and, you know, a, a, uh, showing students how to use a laser pointer uh, in, in that situation. 
uh, was very, uh, you know, a big part of it. Where to stand, you know, do you, uh, the, the obvious, the first inclination of most students was to stand facing the, uh, the screen so that, you know, they could see what was on the screen. And so, you know, this is a great opportunity to, to demonstrate how a presenter working in front of a classroom or an audience uh, would be able to have to pivot back and forth uh, between looking at the screen and looking at the audience. So a lot of real good opportunities for uh, presentation skills. Okay, so um, let's take a look at a, an actual chart and then uh, see again uh, how it's done. So uh, the first thing that you may notice is that um, it's really the same structure as the pie chart. All of it is done on two columns. The first column is your topic, and the second column is your is your number, your data. What I what I really like about this one is just that the topic was was so was clever. Let me just enlarge it so you can uh, see it better. And the data is so clear and logical, but uh, it basically it's how many gummy bears are in a package you know, from 8.20 to, to 9 a.m. on October 31st. Now, of course, this one, uh, I, I let this one slide because there's not a lot of uh, actual English involved in terms of doing research. All this student had to do was count the gummy bears in the package, but I really, really liked it uh, because um, they, you know, it's, it's so obvious. I mean, it's almost like a linear progression. Um, so I, I really, I really like this one. Uh, here's another one. Okay, so again, so this is the same one uh, we're looking at. Oops, let me undo that. I didn't grab the whole slide. I want to move that over. Make it a little bit larger. So um, this is the one with the different cars. But uh, what I wanted to do now is to show you uh, how to um, insert the actual photos uh, into the, the chart. So uh, you create the chart simply by doing the same thing uh, we did with the pie chart. You highlight the two columns under insert. Uh, instead of picking the pie chart, students just pick the column chart and there's so many different variations here but basically just went with the first one but um, there's a lot of things you can do with the actual columns so the first time you click on one of these on a column if you notice it selects every column so you can see the little blue dots for every column okay the second time you click on a column, it selects only that column. So in this case, it's only the Honda column. It's only the Toyota column. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing, actually, let me go ahead. I'm going to uh, delete. Well, let's let's tell you what, let's just move this over. Maybe we'll make a new one. Okay. So I I select my 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 first column. And the first thing you may notice is that the, the bars are much narrower. So that's the first thing that if you're gonna, if you wanna insert a photo, you actually need more space. So the way you uh, work with that is you, when you, the first time you click, it's called the series. All of the columns is the series, okay? Let me move that over, okay? And so what you can do is when you click on the series, you can change uh, the series. Okay, so by right clicking, you get a menu and you can say format data series. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see this way over on the right. Uh, you get a uh, the menu for that. And what we're looking at is the, the one that says gap width. 
Let me just make sure you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. Okay. So gap width is the space between the columns. And there's a slider. So uh, as you increase the width, the columns get narrower. But as you decrease the width, the columns get wider, see? And so for this particular project, you'd want to make them. You wouldn't want to make them all the way. You need a little bit of space between them. So there you go. OK, so what I said before was the first time you click, the entire series is highlighted. The second time, only one. So now what we want to do is, we again, we want to just change that one. So you right click on it and you can get a menu uh, for that particular column. And uh, you know the first thing you may want to do is maybe just change a color, see? So you, you could have a different color of a column, okay? But one of the um, options uh, is picture, okay? So if you click on picture, it's going to ask you where, do you, where are you going to get the picture from? Well, you, they could go on the internet and it draw directly from the internet. In this case, I, I have a few photos uh, that I've already saved. Uh, so, you know, you could show them either find the picture first, save it on your computer, or go right to the image search and look for it. So um, I do have some photos in my uh, already saved for this particular project. A little bit of looking around first. Here we are in the webinars, and today is March 16th, and I have a pictures for projects. So I've already saved a bunch of pictures. So there's my Honda. And I'll select the picture you want and insert it and boom, right there into the uh, into the column. Uh, here's my Ch Chevrolet. Click on it one time. So you that column is highlighted. Right click, select your fill and select a picture instead of a color. Look for the file. Do that again. Sorry for this long, boring trip. And there's the Chevy. And it goes right into it. So obviously, um, you know, more rectangular, more, well, square -er, uh, columns, you know, cause less distortion, but you get the idea. Uh, but if you remember the, the uh, picture from the or the, the, the cake slide, I, I, it was very, very uh, effective. And uh, one more to share. Again, same idea this time though. Again, this was for, uh, you know, what TV channels do people watch? Uh, the students felt in this case that uh, the pie chart uh, was a better example of t uh, or a better way to display uh, the data. Okay, so um, I saw that there was a, a question about uh, how do the students uh, gather research. So uh, before we finish up, let me just talk a little bit about that, uh, two particular things. Uh, as I mentioned um, because I knew that students uh, would be um, doing presentations to the class or to other people. Uh, this is in this particular project I asked that students uh, after they were in partners and this is this was a great team project that they had to come ask me first and clear with getting approval on their particular project topic. Uh, before they started work. And the reason for that was uh, avoiding duplication. So I would keep a list and say, okay, this team was working on, you know, what's the favorite color? This team is working on uh, what's the, you know, the, the favorite food. And that way, uh, when it came time to presentations, it, it, we wouldn't see the same presentation uh, three or four times. And the second thing I did 
was uh, make sure that, uh, except for that one about the gummy bears, uh, was to make sure that um, students had to actually ask a question uh, and not do something visually. So like, you know, what, what color hair or what color shirt wouldn't work because they could just look and, and gather their data that way. And so um, I did always uh, make sure that the information they were collecting required them to actually ask and answer a question. And then uh, truth is, uh, for, for most of these classes, I also actually had to demonstrate a data collection, uh, which for the most part, uh, you meant walking around a classroom, uh, you know, with a clipboard or a notebook and a piece of paper. Uh, and then I would just have them uh, you know, like list the topics on that piece of paper. And sometimes there was an other, uh, you know, if they obviously because they couldn't list every single car, but they could list the most uh, popular cars and then list other. Uh, and then just using uh, hash marks, you know, they didn't really have to collect student names, but, you know, as they, you know, everybody who selected, you know, Toyota, they just have a hash mark and then um, count up the hash marks. Um, and the way I would actually do that many times, uh, I had, uh, you know, counting students as every five minutes as they came into the classroom. You know, if your classrooms or your physical classes are, were like mine, what I would actually do is, you know, from eight o'clock, you know, when the class started, I'd write up on the board a, a number, you know, with hashtags, hash marks of how many students were actually in the class at eight o'clock. 805, 810. And so I, I demonstrated, uh, you know, collecting data and then converting that data to, um, you know, uh, numerical data and then plotting, uh, you know, maybe as a, a line graph or, a, uh, you know, the number of students in the classroom at a particular time. Uh, so I hope that answers the, the question about how students actually collected data. Of course, in a, a hybrid uh, situation, you know, you you would have to you know work with students about how they would do that. In, you know, in breakout rooms and chat, you know, through chat, through email, uh, collecting the data. So um, that actually uh, brings me uh, to the end of the projects uh, that I wanted to. Uh, share with you today. Uh, is there anybody who um, would like to see how the uh, speech balloons are created? Uh, I can do that quickly uh, before we uh, conclude for today. Barry, um, while we're off, while we're waiting for that answer, um, and there was another question. Um, can you give us a sense, Anthony, if you, you can help me uh, to see if there are any more? Any more questions? Yes, Barry, can you hear me? Barry. Barry, are you, can you hear me? Anthony, anything yet? Or should we just move to the uh, conclusion? Uh, Barry, can you hear me? I am not hearing Anthony. Maybe you're speaking, but for some reason, I'm not hearing anything. But I can look at the chat now. Barry, can you hear me? It's odd that I lost the sound. Hold on a moment. Oh, it looks like it's muted for some reason. Barry. Now, there we go. Hmm, somehow Barry, can my, you hear me? I can. It, somehow I muted myself on the headset. There we go. OK, no worries. I, um, we're, we're you can tell me. <laughs> you can tell me. Have I been speaking into the void uh, with nobody hearing me for the last twenty minutes? No, 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 no. We can. We can. Me? Yeah. No, we can hear you just fine. Great. So, okay. Yeah. Um, there was a question um, before we um, ask about specific projects again. Um, so, can you give us a sense how long these projects take? Um, obviously, the research one is a lot more involved than the previous ones that you showed. But can you give us a sense, like how long you? you know, it would take you um, to do that kind of initial PowerPoint project or the initial Excel project and then the research project. 
um, you know, that's a, a, a sort of a dynamic uh, situation because the more you do projects uh, with students, then the subsequent projects happen faster. And of course, you know, not, uh, I very rarely got 100% uh, completion on every single project. Uh, so so there, there is that. But, you know, if you, and I, I will say that uh, back in the day, uh, a lot of these, my, my uh, classes were, um, I'm going to cringe when I say this, they were four hour long classes. Uh, when back in the, you know, when we had that luxury. Um, so yes, there were, you know, I could devote an hour of class time or an hour and a half of class time, you know, for, for work on projects. So again, you know, we have a new situation, um, but, you know, I, I would expect that, you know, you will always have some students in the class who, uh, you know, even in lower levels, you know, by the time you finish explaining what to do, they, they're like, here, teacher, I finished my project. You know, uh, and then there are others who it will take a, a long time. Um, and, and then again, with the projects, you know, especially if it involves writing, it's not just the project, it's the writing. And so there's a lot of, you know, let's first draft, second draft, third draft, uh, you know, so it's really hard to say, but, uh, you know, to give a hard and fast number, but, you know, I, I would probably look at, you know, two weeks, you know, by the, you know, from the time you uh, start to, you know, explain what it is that students are going to do uh, and, you know, give student work time, uh, you know, whether it was in class or now, you know, out of class time when they could work on these projects. Uh, and then you start to see in the first week or so, you start to see some of your students, uh, you know, turning them in uh, and completing them. Uh, and then, you know, others follow along. And, and as I said, some people, you know, some students never finish them for uh, one reason or, or another. Uh, that the, the, the research project at the end, though, I would give, uh, typically, I would give at least three weeks before the end of the semester uh, to get students working on them. And there were some other things involved, you know, the coordination with the other classes, uh, and then actual presentations you know, in, in, uh, you know, how many presentations could, could I do or could students do, uh, you know, in a row uh, with, you know, when they were actually doing the presentation. So you want to make sure you leave enough time so that all of the students who've completed the projects can, can do the presentations. Does, I hope that answers the question. So uh, it, sound, it seems like uh, there's not uh, a need to review the uh, speech balloons or the call outs, uh, and that's quite okay. Um, so what I will do is um, I notice that uh, there are some questions now that I can see the uh, questions and answers about notes available um, and listen to the presentation from last week. Um, Anthony, I think that sort of fits into, uh, falls into what your um, explanation about, the, even though some of these are recorded, uh, getting them, you know, into a viewable fashion or viewable form with all of the uh, accommodations uh, for accessibility uh, takes some time. Um, I, I will, though, work with uh, OTAN uh, to share the, um, the presentation. And I guess what we can do is go back uh, for the first week's presentation and, and share the slides only from that, uh, you know, by, for everybody who uh, are, was in the first presentation. Gary, there was, um, there's another mm -hmm. Q&A question um, or, or um, yeah, question. So um, do you happen to have like a list of your project ideas somewhere that you might be able to share with folks? You've given us some, some different examples today, oh, but do you have any kind of well, list like that? I, I would have to, to put it together. <laughs> Many years ago, I used to write a column. I don't know, some of you may be familiar with a, 
an ESL magazine called American Language Review. Uh, and I used to write a monthly column for them. So I, I, I think I had about 20 or 30 different projects, but uh, it's been a while. Um, I can suggest coming back next week for several more projects. How's that? And Barry, um, uh, a question just popped up in the chat from Joyce. Could you review oh, the steps okay. on how to? Can you review the steps on how to insert column data into pie charts slash charts? Okay, uh, let me go ahead and find. Uh, We'll just go ahead. Uh, am I still sharing or? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so I'll just, let's just, just create one. Okay, so we'll just start from a blank uh, workbook. So this is happening live. And so we'll see what, we'll see what happens. So again, for all of these projects, you're really only dealing with two columns. Okay, and I would show students some of these things, for example, making the column a little bit wider for you know the the names but um let's say it's for example is you know favorite desserts okay so the first thing is you just you know get your list of desserts so i'm thinking chocolate cake uh, chocolate pie chocolate mousse you see where this is going uh uh, what else could we have? Chocolate. What, what else is chocolate? Chocolate tiramisu. Is that tir tiramisu? What else can we make out of chocolate? Chocolate shake. Okay. So out of my class, um, you know, let's say uh, 14 people said chocolate cake is their favorite. Uh, five people said chocolate pie, two people said chocolate mousse, uh, tiramisu, actually nine, oh my, and then chocolate shakes was, uh, let's say, uh, four or three, three is good enough. Okay, so there you go. You've got two columns, and the first one is the subject, second one uh, is the number, okay? Basically, all it is is highlighting everything, both columns, and insert. And then you have different types of charts. So if it's a pie chart, you click on that and you select it. And it's all automatic. Now, this particular one doesn't feature the numbers, but you, you know, pick another one. Okay, that one doesn't have numbers. So that one has numbers, but notice the numbers are in percentages. See? So you just go through them and see which one best fits your needs. I, I was pretty sure that uh, one of them may actually have values. So uh, let's see. If you click on the plus there, it includes the labels and the legend and the chart title. You deselect it, it disappears. Yeah, so there we go. I, I think that's just, is that just the numbers? Right, so whatever I did there, see now instead of a percentage, five is the, uh, the number. Okay, so if you don't like that one, you want to change the chart type. There's an actual menu item right there. So we'll go back to the, uh, the column and pick a column and say, okay. And then it changes. And again, you have different variety, different styles. And, and, you know, you can let your students, you know, explore here if you want about the different types of, uh, Oh, thanks. Thanks. I see that uh, Elaine uh, rem reminded me of uh, chocolate ice cream. Yeah, of course. How could I forget that? But anyway, there it is. Does that help, uh, Joyce?
I hope so. Yeah. Uh, was Very, that a yes? Yeah, Joyce said yes. Okay, perfect. Anything else? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask folks. If we did have any um, other questions for Barry, if you want Barry to show you again um, any of the uh, project steps that he did, um, now's the time. You can go ahead and pop it in the chat for the Q&A. Either way, we'll get to it. I will work with um, Anthony and with uh, Melinda Holt to um, make the um, the two presentations uh, available. I think we we can email those out, correct? Uh, yeah, typically, Barry, what we do is we um, we we get them onto our COVID nineteen page, um, mm -hmm. but we can we can look at some other options as well. Barry, actually, I did have a question. Um, I yeah. think. Um, um, so again, you were saying um, sometimes the students, they generate the chart in Excel, but they want to display it in a PowerPoint slide. So is it simply they just copy that chart? Yeah, let's, and let's do pop that. over to PowerPoint, just paste it, or do you have exactly. a better way to do that? No, that's, that's the way I would do it. Uh, let's get over to a, a PowerPoint that I have open here. Okay, so this is the speech balloon one, but it doesn't matter. We'll just add a new slide, a new blank slide. Okay, so over here in the, you're just highlighting, you know, you, you click anywhere on the complete chart. Okay, so that it's uh, the complete chart is highlighted. I'm going to try, got to do it without moving the mouse. There we go. Just copy it, come on over to the PowerPoint and just paste it. So uh, your most, you know, even, even the, you know, beginning high students, uh, once that's demonstrated, uh, can do it. The idea of, though is they, they do have to make sure that the chart is complete uh, the way they want it over in the Excel before they paste it because um you're pasting it like as a you know a picture so if there's something wrong he here like and, and what would happen like i would see their powerpoint and i'd catch like a spelling error or something here they have to go back into the excel to fix it and then you know recopy and repaste and barry um yeah. Another another chat question here. So remind us again um, back in the Excel. So you um, right now you had your list of uh, five desserts, right? The mm -hmm. cake, pie, mousse, tiramisu, and the shake. But then you're like, oh, I forgot to add the ice cream and the donuts. So how do I um, add that data and then get an updated chart that will have the new right. um, the new data? Okay, so um, that's so. If you've made the chart once, I don't know if you saw what I did. I changed the existing data. And did you notice how the, the, uh, that part was live? The chocolate cake went from 14 down to 10. Okay. And, and so if I, I think if, even if I do the spelling chocolate shakes, right away that becomes chocolate shakes over here but if you have to add, i think if you have to add a whole new category so barry you're saying the current table is dynamic with yeah. the data that you've already listed I, but now now we're adding more data to it right so i think uh i, I think I, I may have misstated that the very first time so you do have to you know just highlight it again and just draw the chart again uh insert your your chart and just to see so now you have the chocolate ice cream and then uh the other thing is you know these things here too there's different ways you know you can make the letters larger uh etc cetera, etc cetera. 
Let's see if I can do that real quick. And see. So there's a lot of you know dynamic ability within, which could be important. For example, if you are um, you know going to project this as part of a PowerPoint slide, then you'd want these things to be you know the letters to be as large as possible. And Barry, that chart yeah. title, um, that's a text box. So you can actually go ahead and yep. um, actually give the give your chart a title, right? Exactly. So let's type in uh, favorite types of desserts uh, if they're chocolate. See, and then again, whatever it is that whatever is final here you know you highlight the whole thing let me keep moving the mouse and copy it you know see that one's no good anymore we'll delete that try and delete it here we go okay and then paste a new one So it's it's much easier to read the the labels. Okay, so I think um, let's finish up by going to my uh, final slide. And um, if you remember at the beginning of the webinar, uh, I set out some objectives that participants will be able to demonstrate to their ESL, AB, and academic students, several separate projects using Microsoft PowerPoint and Excel. So your students can practice vocabulary, grammar, or demonstrate mastery of content. Uh, I hope that I've done that and that you are able to do that now with your students or your colleagues.